Hello everyone, I'm Jen and I make useful English Lit study videos on Shakespeare, poetry, fiction, literary ideas and more to help you become a literary expert. So if that sounds like what you need, then make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you never miss out on my future weekly videos. So one of the most common requests I get from students is essay marking and feedback, right? So students often tell me that they've written all these practice essays, but they don't know if they're any good or what they need to improve on because, well, often the teachers just don't have the time to mark their work or maybe the students themselves feel a little bit too shy to approach teachers with this sort of request. And so I understand, of course, that not everyone can afford a tutor. And while I can help to a certain extent, there's only so much time and bandwidth I have to mark everyone's essays, right? But this sort of resourcing challenge got me thinking about how the rise of generative AI tools like GPT Copilot and now DeepSeek could really help address the student need for immediate personalized feedback on their work. So it's a no-brainer that solving this could be a massive game changer for student learning and progress because we all know that consistent practice and constructive feedback is the best formula for improvement. Now, if you've watched my previous videos on using AI for literature learning, you know that I'm a big advocate for using AI tools intelligently and responsibly to level up your studies. So one of the greatest benefits of using an AI model as a student is its ability to provide real-time, immediate, and to a large extent, personalized feedback on your work. Ideally, the best feedback would come from a knowledgeable and caring teacher or tutor, but not everyone has access to this sort of thing. So at present, at least having some kind of support from AI is arguably better than not having any support at all. But asking an AI for help requires some skills and considerations, at least at the current stage where 99% of us are still using AI platforms, which are based on a Q&A interaction model. But perhaps one day when agentic AI catches up, we'll start having these AI agents mark all our work without having us to give them any instructions, which is thrilling, but also a scary thought. So anyway, for now, in the rest of this video, I'm going to demonstrate this process by using DeepSeek to mark a sample student essay on a GCSE Macbeth question. And specifically, I'll be showing you how to ask the AI in a way that has it produced the most relevant and helpful response for actionable improvement. So with that, let's just dive straight into the walkthrough. So I'm going to begin my prompt by giving the AI a specific role that is appropriate for the task in question. You are an examiner with the GCSE English Lit Paper and experienced English teacher. And then I explain the context and my ask. A student has submitted his practice essay on a mock English Lit Paper and would like feedback on his work. Then I'm going to state what I want the AI to do, which is to evaluate the essay based on the marking rubrics, right? So alongside that, I'm going to attach a document of the question and the official GCSE marking rubrics, right? And of course, I've also pasted the sample student essay in my prompt. So let's start by looking at DeepSeek's thought process, which I think is a nice approximation of how a level-headed examiner would consider an essay against the marking rubrics. And by the way, just a slight tongue-in-cheek tangent here, it's not guaranteed that an examiner would always be level-headed or in a good mood when marking student essays, right? Especially if it's the end of their working day and your essay is the 99th one out of like a hundred that they'll be marking that day. You can imagine the state that they're going to be in by the time they mark your work, right? So notice that what the AI does is it frames its assessment of the essay according to each AO, assessment objective, and which each objective it points out what the student did well and falls short in. Now, this sort of judicious balance of pros and cons in marking may seem like a given, right? But I've actually come across quite a few student essays where the feedback that they get has been mostly negative or discouraging, or at least very much focused on what they didn't do so well, right? So at least the AI here is leading its commentary with with strengths before moving on to weaknesses. And so it's probably in a way a kinder marker than some teachers or examiners. But the thoughts here, of course, aren't as incredibly specific, right? So we're gonna need to examine the actual AI response for some more constructive feedback. So if you've taken a moment to read through the actual response, just a couple of things 
which I think it's helpful and not so helpful about the response. So I really like that it asks some guiding questions, such as how does irony reflect Macbeth and Lady Macbeth's deteriorating partnership? And how does this context of Jacobean beliefs about witchcraft and divine retribution amplify the audience's anticipation of Macbeth's downfall? So I think this sort of guiding question really encourages students to sharpen their awareness of the link between the technique and theme in their analysis. So in its assessment objective two, effects of techniques commentary, the suggestion to analyze how the snake metaphor from the quote, scotched the snake, evokes tension and vulnerability, mirroring Macbeth's fear of retaliation instead of just stating that animal imagery conveys inhumanity, is a really good way of pushing the student to expand on the specifics of their imagery-based observation, right? Especially in relation to what Shakespeare's use of imagery reflects about his character's psychology. So I also really like that the response provides better alternative expressions in the AO4 style and precision feedback, which is of course definitely very helpful for students making their own language edits to see a concrete example of how they can do this. But of course, there's also parts in the AI's response that don't really add much value. For example, with its somewhat out of place point for students to address themes like ambition, guilt, and tyranny, which are central to the play's critique of unchecked power in the AO3 contextual awareness section, because actually it doesn't really say much. And the suggestion of using psychological instability instead of the phrase instability of the psychological state that's not really an example of using more sophisticated vocabulary, even though it says it is. It's just really a more concise rephrasing of the student's original language. But anyway, DeepSeek's final three recommendation points to expand on themes, integrate context, and sharpen structure, while it's all kind of generic and nothing that a decent English teacher won't have already told students to do for their essays at some point in their studies, that's still really handy as actionable reminders for the students here to bear in mind and immediately focusing on when they go and revise their draft. So it's hardly the best feedback in the world, right? And it's not supposed to be. But if we put it all in perspective and consider that a lot of students don't even have anyone to read through their practice essays to begin with, let alone mark it or grade it with feedback, then this is really a step up. So what are the key takeaways from this exercise of me using an AI to mark a sample student essay? The biggest one, I think, is that students really now have 24-7 access to at least some kind of personalized feedback via an AI model, right? Compared to pre-generative AI era, when the only way to get this was really to ask teachers or hire tutors for help. Of course, the fact is that the best, most effective feedback is still going to come from genuinely good human educators, if not for the reason that most feedback isn't just about the comment itself, but the student's willingness to actually act on the feedback in their revised work. And often, students are motivated to improve for reasons beyond just achieving academic success, right? We know that there are huge emotional and social factors at play as well. For example, maybe students want to impress a teacher that they respect, like, or fear, or they want to benchmark their performance against that of their peers by comparing work or use the peer review process as an opportunity to maybe connect with their friends, right? And it doesn't matter how comprehensive or detailed the AI's essay feedback is. Where it falls short is if we consider those hugely important emotional and social levers in a student's holistic learning process. So this means that rather than seeing AI as this wholesale substitute of teachers and tutors, we should see AI as a useful learning companion and an efficient catalyst to speed up the feedback loop in a student's learning trajectory. Because now we know very quickly those main ideas we need to work on, which then enable students to arrive at what's hopefully a more refined and better proof read essay for teachers to evaluate. So now with basic things like grammar, sentence structure, quote embedding, etc., out of the way, teachers can better expend mental and emotional bandwidth to focus on the higher level aspects of a student's work, such as their depth of insights, the creativity of their ideas, the strength of their argument, etc., right? Which means even better, more in-depth feedback for the student, which is a win-win.
So, if you are a student who needs to write any sort of essay, whether it be for English or any other humanities subjects, or maybe sometimes even science, maybe in biology, here's the flow that I would recommend for you to use with an AI tool like DeepSeek or GPT or whatever to get quick and helpful feedback on your writing. Number one is to provide the AI with the role of an experienced examiner or teacher for whichever exam board and subject your essay is for. And then you're going to provide it with an essay question and official assessment objectives or marking rubrics. And you could always do that by uploading an extra document. Number two is to clearly state your ask for the AI to evaluate your work based on those assessment objectives and marking rubrics provided, making sure to grade a grade and score as well as detailed feedback for improvement. You can download the template that I provided in the description box below for how you can phrase this. Number three is to consider your strengths and what you did well, and of course, pat yourself on the back for them, and then examine each area for improvement and reflect on how you can work on these areas. Of course, you have the option of asking the AI to elaborate on its feedback, but make sure that you don't just rely on it to give you a rewrite, uh, which you just copy and paste to pass off as your own work, right? Because remember, the AI's actual writing can often be quite vague. Chances are your own style won't be similar to that of the AI's, right? Most people write in a much less judicious or actually sometimes vanilla tone. Number four, with your now refined essay, you can either submit it for marking or if possible, share with your teachers or tutors about how you used AI to improve your original draft. Great educators will be open-minded and perhaps even share their own strategies and thoughts on how you can use AI effectively and responsibly. Now, one important point of consideration here is that there's always a temptation to keep asking the AI for feedback and more feedback and more, more, more feedback to the extent where perhaps it becomes an over-reliance on the AI's advice in lieu of applying your own judgment and thinking. So on this, I'm just going to make my stance clear with an analogy that I think everyone can relate to. We know that eating protein is good for strengthening our muscles, right? So technically, it's a good thing to do. However, eating too much protein is a recipe for weight gain and kidney stones, which is not good for your health at all. Now, the same logic goes for using AI. Using the right amount of AI will bolster your capability to learn better and more efficiently. But using too much AI is going to backfire and clog up your own thinking arteries just as eating too much chicken or beef is going to clog up your real ones. So my point is, you just want to make sure that you are using AI for feedback in moderation and always with a critical, sensible mind. And there you go, guys. That is my quick demo of how you can use an AI tool like DeepSeek to get some quick, useful feedback on your own essay. Bear in mind, though, that AI feedback should only be part of your entire learning process. And that at the end of the day, the best learning only happens in the context of human to human exchange, right? Whether that be between you and your teacher or tutor or you and your friends and peers and classmates. So for more Macbeth or AI for Learning videos, you can check out the playlists here or in the description box below. Yeah. If you're interested in learning more about how you can use AI to level up your studies, then please sign up for early access for my course. I'm going to reach out with more details very soon. As always, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful in any way so that you can encourage me to keep making these useful, innovative learning videos every week for you. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button below and switch on the bell notification so you never miss out on my future weekly videos. And I'm going to see you, as always, in the next one. Bye!